hello once again friends and uh, in this particular module, we will be discussing how to manage a fungating wound. And uh, I am Dr. Abhijit Dam and I am the president of the National Association of Palliative Care for uh, Ayush and Integrative Medicine. Now, coming to a fungating wound, a fungating wound is basically a chronic non-healing wound, which is mostly an open sort of wound mostly seen in cancer patients, in, in patients with cancer, different types of cancer, you get this fungating wound. Now, here is an example of a fungating wound, as you can see the, there is a large wound, which is everted, the margins are rolled out and uh, there is a lot of uh, discharge on the surface of the wound and it is got a dull pinkish, this is an unhealthy looking wound. And these type of wounds are caused by the malignant growth, by the growth of cancer cells into the skin and break down. Now, what basically happens is that the cancer cells compared to the normal cells, they keep on replicating at a much faster rate than the normal cells. Now, what happens uh, during the normal cell growth? Normally, when our cells grow, the blood vessels also keep pace with the growth of the cells. So, it is a balanced growth. But cancer is a revolt. So, cancer cells, they keep on growing so fast that the normal growth of blood vessels fails to keep up pace with the growth of the cells. So, the cells grow at a faster rate and then they, because of lack of blood supply, they keep breaking up. And this breakdown of the cells creates the uh, wound or the ulcer, which we call it, and this is called a fungating growth. So, uh, this is what I had explained and this fungating growth, because there is a repeated and continuous breakdown of cells, there is a lot of malodor and there is a secondary infection out there and uh, when there is a secondary, a secondary infection, that would be, uh, you know, chances that the patient would be infected, that would be sepsis and uh, the pain can increase and so on and so forth. So, here uh, that same wound and uh, you can see uh, we have applied uh, certain medications to the wound and uh, the size of the wound has uh, gone down by almost uh, 10 to 15 percent, because the wound earlier as I showed you was an infected wound and once you start cleaning the wound in a proper way, dressing the wound in a proper way, the pain goes down, the inflammation goes down, the bad odor, the mal odor goes down, you know, so many things would go down and it helps in improving the quality of life of the patient. So, that is very important focusing on the quality of life of the patient, because that is the essence of palliative care, not only for the patient, but also for the caregivers. Because for the caregivers, you know, watching uh, that malignant wound on the patient, on their loved ones is very distressing. And cleaning that wound uh, every day takes time, it takes almost an hour. So, the dimensions to be considered while treating a malignant wound are, is a holistic dimension. You need to not only focus on the physical aspect, physically that is the wound, but every time the patient gets up in the morning and looks in the mirror, he sees the wound and that reminds him of his cancer and that reminds him that uh, oh, within a few more days I will be dead. So, there is a, it is a psychological pain also and it becomes a social stigma, because with that wound, uh, nobody wants to meet him. He becomes a social outcast. He is not allowed to go to religious places, he is not uh, allowed to, uh, you know, participate in social uh, rituals and other activities and so on and so forth. And spiritual, the moment he sees that wound, he, he challenges his own existence. He feels that, why am I alive or what wrong did I do that God has been punishing me with such sort of, you know, wounds. So, you need to consider the patient on a holistic basis rather than just focusing on the wound. The wound is just a part of the patient and the patient is a human being. So, focus on the human being. The best way to do it is put yourself in the foot, in the boots of the patient. Imagine that what you would feel through, what you would feel or go through if you were in the patient's place and then you will find the answers coming to you, right. This is not exactly rocket science that you need to study so hard and this. What you need to have is compassion, because if you have compassion, then you have the ability to do palliative care and good palliative care. 
So, the physical problems in a malignant wound such as this could be pain, malodor, infection, bleeding, exudates and infestation with maggots which is horrible. You know what maggots are basically? Basically house flies. Once those house flies they, they sit on the malignant wound and then they lay eggs and the eggs hatch into larva and those small larva they start feeding on the dead tissue of the wound and they start burying, uh, burrowing within and then there is a lot of bad smell coming out. And uh, you know socially this is unacceptable, you can see the larva is actually slipping out and falling out. It looks terrible, it feels terrible and all this can be prevented as well as treated. Psychological aspects would be altered body image, sexuality like I said that gentleman whose photo I had shown, his wife refused to sleep with him anymore. And the, you imagine how devastating it was for that gentleman who was still very young. A fear of constant fear of death, depression, anxiety, shame, isolation. So, this is uh, another um, picture where here you have the malignant wound and it is on the verge of breaking down. Social aspects family isolation because nobody would want to even be associated with the family because they feel that maybe it is communicable on. So, there are so many misbeliefs. So, family isolation, social isolation, social stigma for fear of contagion, effects on the family. I mean other families would say do not play with the kids of this family because you know their father has cancer. So, it becomes such a bad social stigma, effects on sexual relationship and marital disharmony. So, this was another lady, an elderly widow who had nobody to go back on and she had vulval cancer and there was severe physical pain and uh, she was totally shattered because uh, her uh, daughter in law threw her out of the house because she had this cancer in her vulva and it used to smell a lot and she had, uh, she had uh, the concept which I said total pain that is physical pain, psychological pain, spiritual pain and being a social outcast now social pain. What are the spiritual issues? Interference with religious rites because of the tumor you cannot participate in ritual, ritualisms or other things. You might be asking whether why has God punished me, punishment from God, a fear of impending death, existential dilemmas that why am I alive, why am, why do I have to go through all of this. So, how to go about an effective palliation of such cases? Consider the patient of as a whole as I told you, good symptom control like control of the pain and all. Consider other approach a holistic approach focus on the social, psychological, spiritual issues as well. Involve the family members in wound care that is empowering the family because the family is often at a loss as to how exactly to clean the wound, what to do, how to do the dressings of the wound. So, uh, that is very important how to teach them and this teaching uh, is of a practical importance. So, in assessing the wound you have to see where the wound is located, what is the appearance of the wound, what is the condition of the surrounding skin and what is the potential for complications. That is if the wound for example, if I have a wound on my neck out here. So, just below this is a major artery, the carotid artery. So, the wound can any time burrow into my carotid artery and result in a blowout and I might die you know within a few minutes or the wound can compress or, uh, or damage my breathing pipe which is the trachea causing difficulty in breathing or it can just below the uh, just behind the trachea is my esophagus which is a feeding tube that can compress the esophagus and cause difficulty in swallowing. So, you need to see where the wound is located and what are the surrounding structures there which might be affected by the further growth of the wound. So, practical issues in managing such a malignant wound is to first of all ensure pain relief. Before you do dressings for say patient, please give an extra dose of analgesics half an hour before. Suppose you want to do a dressing at 7.30, give an extra dose of say paracetamol or tramadol to the patient at 7 o'clock. Ask the patient to, to take a good bath 
before the dressing. Why before the dressing? Once you take a bath, most of the uh, you know dirt and uh, other exudates are removed, uh, so that you have less of a uh, job to do during the dressing. Clean and irrigate the wound with normal saline. You can make normal saline at home, right? In one liter of water, if you can add a small spoon of salt, and then put put that water in a pressure cooker and uh, you know uh, uh, let it whistle once or twice and then cool it and use it that's normal saline so ensure the wound is clean and dry use absorbable dressings if you cannot afford absorbable dressings take old saris which are available in the cotton saris and cut them into you know hanker large handkerchief size uh, you know pieces and fold them and then you can uh, steam them Right. If you steam them in a idli uh, stand, you put a idli stand in the pressure cooker and you steam them just like you steam idlis. So, those are now sterile uh, and you can use them for cleaning the wounds. Give attention to the surrounding areas, just, just do not focus on the wound, give attention to the areas of the surrounding areas of the skin. You can do syringing to remove slough that is take an empty syringe, take uh, that uh, normal saline and forcibly you can squirt that normal saline onto the wound surface, so that the exudates and slough comes out. Apply uh, adequate antibiotics if necessary and secure with bandaging and adhesive tapes. So, for pain during dressings as I said empathy, your compassion is very important, be involved, extra dose of analgesics and before you remove the old dressings, soak it in normal saline for some time and then only remove it. You can apply local anesthetics topically like uh, xylocaine uh, injection drops you can put or you can apply xylocaine cream and so on and so forth. For tackling malodor because it smells bad, daily cleaning and dressing is of important, local hygiene is very important. Local metronidazole, metronidazole tablet you can take, crush it and uh, sprinkle it on the wound, so that will take away the malodor. You can use metrogel ointment or metrogel irrigation also. So, uh, attention to personal hygiene is of paramount importance. These wounds can suddenly bleed, so you have to inform the family members in advance that suddenly this wound can sometimes bleed and the patient can actually bleed to death, which is a terrible thing to happen actually. So, whenever there is bleeding many people are afraid of the bright red color, you know. So, at that time it is advisable to take a dark colored towel or a green colored towel, because green when it reacts with red uh, you turn it turns to black basically. So, you take a dark colored towel and give firm pressure for at least 3 to 5 minutes. Do not give pressure for 3 seconds and then take it out and then again give no. Firm pressure for at least 3 to 5 minutes you have to give and you call the call for help and ask the patient to take it easy, because if the patient becomes very anxious then his blood pressure would increase and that would further aggravate the bleeding. <coughs> so, here is uh, example of a wound, here you can see the lymph nodes which are cancerous lymph nodes, this is uh, cancer of the vulva and uh, just below this here you have the femoral artery and the femoral veins, these are large blood vessels just below it, right. So, this wound can actually burrow down and tear the femoral artery and femoral vein and the patient can you know die within minutes. So, this is where uh, how the location of a wound becomes very important. Maggot infestation as I said the flies can come and sit, so best thing and the easiest thing to do is to give a mosquito net. So, if the patient sits inside a mosquito net then the flies will not come and bother the patient and that way the patient is safe. And you can do the physic once the maggots are there you can use uh, a gauge piece soaked in turpentine and keep it by the side of the wound and the maggots usually come out and you could pick them out with the forceps and uh, put them in hot water and uh, that way physical removal can be done. Training of the care providers, the training of the family members, because you cannot always go to the patient's home and do daily dressings. So, you need to train them, you need to train them how to maintain their personal hygiene, how to make clean gauges at home, how to dispose the clean gauges 
how to do bandaging and so on and so forth. Right? Now, this picture, this is how this gentleman used to do the dressings, huge, you can see the huge cancerous growth in the breast of this lady. She is no more with us, but then this gentleman used to spend close to one and half hours daily to do the dressings out here. And those dressings were very large and cumbersome dressings. And here, I will just go back. By the time the dressings were done, it, it used to take a couple of hours to do the dressings. And the lady used to feel so uncomfortable after the dressings that in another three or four hours later, she used to take off all the dressings. So, all the labor has been lost. So, what we did, we started using these are the sanitary napkins. Just two sanitary napkins would be enough to cover this whole area. And this had an excellent soaking capacity and we just secured them with tape. And these sanitary napkins are available all over India in every small shop. So, this is how you need to also innovate. Just because it is written in some western textbook that dressing this way and that way does not mean that is always true. Innovate so that it suits your own requirements in your own community, whether it is how it becomes socially acceptable, available, affordable. right? So, these are the factors which you need to consider for giving good palliative care. So, these are the factors which you need to consider while doing good palliative care. And well, that is about it for this session and I hope uh, that I have uh, managed to give you a good idea about how to take care of the malignant wound. Thank you.